Greetings, everyone. Today I will be reviewing the Monastic Diurnal. This is from St. Michael's Abbey Press. As you can see here, that is 2011. Now, the day hours include the hours of Lauds, Prime, Terse, Sext, Known, Vespers, and Compline. It does not include Matins, which is also one of the longer offices, one of the longer hours. And that's because it's traditionally said in the middle of the night. And so the presumption is that any monks that would be out in the day doing field work, we might say, would use this diurnal, and then they would all be back in the monastery to pray matins as a community. Now, what struck me first about this is just the size. It's very small and compact. If you see, it fits pretty much my whole hand over the cover. Now, I have a volume of the four set, four volume set of the Liturgy of the Hours here. This is volume three, Ordinary Time. And you'll see that if we put them cover to cover, you actually have a lot, you have a decent amount of space. And I know that that cover does turn over. But also, height wise, you are quite a lot shorter. Now, if you don't have the Liturgy of the Hours, and that doesn't help you. I also have a compact version of the RSV Bible. This is by Ignatius Press there. And once again, the monastic diurnal is a little smaller. I have about up to the first knuckle there. That is smaller in height as well. Now obviously, because it's a monastic diurnal, it is quite a lot thicker than a regular Bible, or even the Liturgy of the Hours. Finally, just a note on the ribbons. These type of ribbons tend to fray at the ends, so I like to tie them off uh, before they do that. I know some other people like to let the ribbons fray all the way up and then tie them off. Uh, that is your personal preference. But without further ado, let's go into this. First thing is if we just look at the text, it's, uh, it's a little small, but obviously it's good in, to fit in the hand. It can uh, easily fit in the hand like so. And if we were to give you a view over, you can see right away the English is both in the center columns, and then the Latin is on the outside. Now this is helpful because the Latin being the official translation, the English translation here is purely devotional. If I'm incorrect in that, someone please correct me but it's not approved for liturgical use. And so, for example, when you're holding the breviary, uh, the English can be a little bit hard to read because of the spine there. But the Latin is the goal that you would be reading the Latin. Uh, is quite easy to see on the sides. It takes a little bit getting used to going from the outside to the outside, but it's not quite difficult. The most difficult thing when I was using this was actually the layout. I was quite used to using as I said, the Liturgy of the Hours here. And so I expected there to be an ordinary that would give me the essentials, and then have a Psalter and the proper of time and the proper of saints. But the monastic dinero is a little bit different in that. Now, if we look, I have this ribbon. We do have the fifth Sunday after Pentecost, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, seventh Sunday after Pentecost. So this is just the plain proper of time, and it gives you whatever you need for the week. Now, according to the old rubrics, the collect of the Sunday is just used throughout the week. Uh, it's in the ordinary form as well. And so this goes through the whole proper of time, all the way from Advent in the beginning, through Lent, and then into Easter, the weeks after Easter, and then Pentecost, so on and so forth. So that covers the first section, and that's a good idea because the section you're not going to be using over and over again is at the end. I'm glad to see that. The section you are using over and over again, it's always a wise choice to have that in the center of the book. And so the Psalter is located in the center of the book, and this is a very nice typeface here. The Psalter, according, arranged for the week, according to the rule of our Most Holy Father Benedict. And you'll see, though, it starts Monday at Prime. Now, Prime comes after Lauds. And so this is what struck me. 
the Psalter is arranged according to the number of Psalms. So if you look here, Psalm 1 is at the start. And so in that sense, they try to arrange it as the book of Psalms, uh, which is an, I guess, valid method, but it, it can be kind of confusing. So starting at Monday Prime, we'll go through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday Prime. Now, when we get to Sunday, Sunday will start at Lauds. You'll see here Sunday Lauds. And after Sunday Lauds, it will go through Sunday Prime, Terse, Sext, Known, and then it will go into Lauds for the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So this is a little complicated. There are six ribbons, so I was able to mark that uh, fairly okay. And I prayed it throughout the course of a month, and I seemed to get used to it. One thing that I didn't quite get used to was you'll notice in many of these texts, for example here, Tuesday at Lod's, the invitatory, or I guess the opening verse, uh, is printed, and then it will just reference you to page 58. So Psalm 66, as we can see here, may God show us grace and blessing, is used to open every day of Lod's. Now, in the case of the Liturgy of the Hours, we might expect Psalm 66 to be printed in the ordinary. However, Psalm 66 is only printed once, and that is at Monday. And so, in order to start Tuesday, unless I have Psalm 66 memorized, I need to go back to Monday. And this is where the flipping is a little confusing, but you'll see that the opening verses and the Gloria are there, and then Psalm 66. After Psalm 66, it starts the Psalms of Monday. And so, if you memorize that, good for you, uh, but if you don't, you'll have some flipping. Now, because the Magnificat and the Benedictus are not printed every day, they give you a card with the Magnificat and the Benedictus on it, uh, double-sided. Just nice to, uh, you can use it as an extra ribbon, it fits inside quite nicely. Uh, and that helps you from flipping back and forth large sections. So if you're on Friday, you don't have to flip back all the way to Monday uh, just to read the Benedictus or the Magnificat. Obviously, if you wanted to do that in English, you would still have to, as the card is only in Latin. But as I s mentioned, uh, the Latin would be what they're using liturgically. And Latin is just a good thing to know, especially these great prayers that we have from the Gospel of St. Luke. Now, going past the main day hours, we'll have Compline, which is the night time hour. And Compline is very short, as you can see, it just takes a couple pages here. And Compline is the same every day. Every day of the week, same Compline. So you can just keep a ribbon on this. Now, one thing I very much like that shows the essence of that this is a Benedictine office is if you look in the Confiteor, uh, they mention Benedict, and so, for example, in the confession to Mary Ever Virgin, Michael the Archangel, John the Baptist, Peter and Paul, and to our Holy Father Benedict. So that's a very nice touch that I kind of like, that brings to life the Benedictine spirituality. And of course, this is meant for people that would be reciting it in common, so they have both options if it's said in choir, and then the option below if you're just saying it by yourself. Another uh, thing that you should be aware of is that the sanctoral cycle, the proper of saints, uh, also is a calendar specific to the Benedictines. So, for example, uh, Benedict's feast day is not just a memorial or a feast, as it might be in the general Roman calendar on July 11th. It is the solemnity of our Holy Father Benedict. And you'll see that when you go throughout the proper of saints, that many other saints are listed that are Benedictines. For example, St. John Golbert, who is also a Benedictine and an abbot. There's many of those throughout the cycle as well. But it's very nice to get into the Benedictine spirituality that way and to really feel that you are part of the community celebrating the saints who have gone before you under the rule of St. Benedict. Uh, finally, in the end here. There's just some appendices. There's some litanies. 
the rite of commemorating a departing soul. There's the itinerary, which is the office for a journey. They have the seven penitentiary, penitential psalms in the back. And likewise, you'll find the office for the dead. Now, the office for the dead I quite like uh, because it includes matins. So the office for the dead includes matins, and it includes all three nocturnes of matins. And it gives you the option, I believe, of only praying one nocturne, but you can use uh, either one or three. So, for example, there's the first nocturne, if I were to flip forward, you would see the second nocturne there as well. So that's what I uh, I thought was very nice in that the Office for the Dead, if you're using just this throughout the day and you're commemorating a parting soul, praying the Office for the Dead, very Catholic thing to do. You can do it all in the monastic diurnal. It's very nice. Um, now, it is a little bit big. It does kind of weighs a little bit heavy in the hand, but it sits quite nice. Uh, if you'll notice, if I just set it down in the center of the book, uh, it sits open, which is, I, I took advantage of that when I was reading sometimes. Obviously, this doesn't happen uh, in every case. Uh, as you can see, the Psalter there, that would completely close it. So it does take some uh, some breaking in. And if you'll notice the uh, binding, let's look here. Binding is quite well done. The spine is not attached. But you'll see how thick this leather uh, binding is. It's quite durable, and the rounded corners really help that it doesn't get uh, damaged quite as much. And then the paper inside there is a very nice, thick uh, type of cover compared especially to the Liturgy of the Hours volumes that have that cover that just wants to kind of come up and is kind of thin and flimsy. Uh, the cover here this this is gonna get protected it's uh it's quite durable it's kind of a matte finish and uh it's just it gives that feel of being really solid and very bedrock you know a good prayer book to carry around so overall if you'd like to pray the benedictine office uh this would definitely be the resource you'd want to invest in it runs about i believe 70 dollars us dollars uh there's a couple different places you can get it from and there is a website run by, I believe, Oblates, uh, Benedictine Oblates, called Saints Shall Rise. And they have an ordo, which gives you all the page numberings and directions you'll need uh, to get you started. For example, if there's a feast day, what do you do from the common of the saints? And then what do you do from the actual Psalter itself? Uh, which is very helpful for anyone getting started, especially myself depending on how much I was going to pray from the saint compared to the day, uh, it was good to do that. Uh, still, decent amount of flipping involved, but uh, a good prayer book if you can get used to all that. So, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time. In the meanwhile, glory to Jesus Christ, now and forever.